Will it be about 1% or 5%? So listen, the harvest is plentiful. It is important you recognize that God Almighty is not going to come from heaven and speak a word in the clouds for people to hear and repent. He's going to use you. He's going to use me. He's going to use us. We are going to do it. Are you here? So God is waiting on us. He's waiting on us. So child of God, don't sit down and ignore the time for evangelism. Don't sit down and ignore it. Get up. Let's do something. Let's join the team. Let's join the team of members that are going out every Saturday. Team of members going out every Saturday. But some of you, you don't even know about it and you don't even care. Are you here? There is a team here. They are consistent. Snow, rain, cold. They are consistent. Going out every Saturday to win souls and also to draw souls to the church. They committed to building the house of God. That's the kind of commitment God expects you to have when you come to Bethel. Congratulations. You have come to Bethel. So, have you, how many people have you led to the Lord so far? How many people have you invited to this church? A man decided, I've had enough with God. Was staying at home. And then a leafless was dropped through the letterbox. And it was a leafless of this church. And the man is still in church today. Isn't that a blessing? That somebody has got to that place of discouragement. But just a leafless was dropped. And the person is in church today. Same way, almost the whole of Broughton will have our, the card of the church in their letterboxes. We finished with Monston Park. We finished with Monston we're in Broughton at the moment. Just that can change somebody's life. Are you here? So in Bethel, we make a commitment to the house of God by being a soul winner. By being a soul winner. By being a soul winner. You can't be ignorant of it. We got to be soul winners. Hallelujah. By being a soul winner, child of God, you're making a commitment to building the house of God. You're making a commitment. Everyone win one. That's the kind of commitment you get when you get to Bethel. When you get to Bethel, nobody will encourage you to win one for Jesus Christ. Are you here? Everyone win one and disciple one. So Bethel is a place of commitment. It's a place of total surrender. It's a place of dedication to Jehovah. Oh, church, it is very important from these scripture verses that we have just read that we want to be like Elisha. We want to be like Elisha. We don't want to be content in Gilgal. We don't want to be content in Gilgal. We want to be persistent like Elisha. We want to move on to a place called Bethel, the next level. So don't remain in Gilgal. Let's get to Bethel. Hallelujah. So, in the scripture verses that we have just, just read from 2 Kings, chapter 2 verse number 3 to verse number 4 we saw where when they got to bethel elijah said to elisha stay here please the lord has sent me to jericho but elisha again declining and declined to stay in bethel did you hear that elijah again declined to stay in bethel in other words elisha was saying that I can't just make a commitment to God and stop. I cannot just make a commitment to God and stop. And this is where there are many believers today. We get to Bethel. We make a commitment to God. Lord, I surrender all my life to you. I surrender, I surrender everything to you. I will give you a tithe of my income. I will give it to you. We make the commitment. We dedicate our lives to Jesus. Which is very, very good. But child of God, there's a place beyond Bethel. Hallelujah. There's a place beyond Bethel. Can we take that again? Listen to this. I know it's important to make a commitment to God. And that is very good. And also in Bethel, we get a whole lot of people. They proceed to making a vow. They vow to God. And they say, all that I have is yours, Jehovah God. They make a vow to God. And that is very, very good, child of God. But listen to this. There is a place beyond Bethel. There is a place beyond Bethel. There is something more than a declaration of commitment. 
because many people are saying i surrender all to jesus i dedicate everything to you lord they made the declaration and they're not doing anything about it and they're still staying in bethel but there's a place beyond bethel tend to someone say there's a place beyond bethel there's a place beyond bethel hallelujah there's a place beyond battle. There's a place beyond making a declaration of commitment. There's a place beyond telling God that I dedicate my love to you. And that place is Jericho. And that place is Jericho. Are you here? Are you ready to go to Jericho? Are you ready to go to Jericho? Are you here? Jericho. Then to somebody, Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Hallelujah. Let's look in the scripture verse Joshua chapter 5 Joshua chapter 5 so where are you in your spiritual growth where are you where do you find yourself you've got to be honest I've given you a photograph in that photograph you can see yourself in Jericho or you can see yourself in Gilgal or in Bethel where are you in your spiritual journey this is important now let's read Joshua 5 verse number 13 Joshua 5 verse number 13 and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand and joshua went to him and said to him are you for us or for our adversary so he said no but as the commander of the army of the lord i have now come and joshua fell on his face to the earth and worship and said to him what does my lord say to his servant verse number 15 then the commander of the lost army said to joshua take your sandal off your foot for the place where you stand is holy and joshua did it hallelujah thank you somebody said neighbor we are now in jericho we are now in jericho we are now in jericho 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 oh hallelujah are you excited about jericho are you excited to know about jericho Tell you somebody, I can't wait to hear about Jericho. I can't wait to hear about Jericho. Gilgal is good. Oh, Gilgal is good. In Gilgal, they come, you can be pumped. Gilgal is good, but it's a better place called Bethel. Hallelujah. But, you know, Bethel is also good, but it's another better place called Jericho. And Jericho we go. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So now in the verses that we have just read, we can see it reveal that Joshua was preparing to take Jericho. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can walk S factor and be happy, we can hear the word of God and be happy. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. To Jesus be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Joshua was preparing to take Jericho. And when he was preparing to take Jericho, he encountered a man who called himself the commander of the armies of God. Hey, hallelujah. A man who called himself the captain of the Lord's host. Hallelujah. Are you here? Are you here? Now, let me cool it down. So now, he encountered this person who said, this man who said is the commander of the Lord's army. Or, in some translations, you will see it written, the commander or the captain of the Lord's host. Okay? Listen. The captain of the Lord's host or the commander of the Lord's army is believed to be the Holy Spirit. Are you here? It's believed. You've got to hear this. You've got to hear this. It's believed to be who? The Holy Spirit. And also, some people also believe. Some people also believe that. The commander of the Lord's army is an angel of the Lord. Okay? Some also believe in that. I believe in the fact that he is the Holy Spirit. But listen, child of God, whether the captain of the Lord's host is the Holy Spirit or is the angel of the Lord, whether it's the Holy Spirit or the angel of the Lord, whichever one you want to believe, the truth is Joshua had an encounter 
with the Lord. He had an encounter with the Lord. Is somebody here? Joshua had an encounter. He had an encounter. Oh, the fact that Joshua had an encounter cannot be denied. Are you listening to me? It cannot be denied. Therefore, we can say that in Jericho, in Jericho, the believer will encounter the Holy Ghost. The believer will encounter the Holy Spirit. Are you here, church? Are you here in Jericho? You will encounter the Holy Ghost. You will encounter the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So the first vital lesson that we can learn in Jericho is the believer will experience God. The believer will experience the Holy Spirit. The believer will experience the presence of Jehovah. Are you here? You will experience the presence of Jehovah when you get to Jericho. When you get to Jericho, you will experience the presence of Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And child of God, when you encounter the Holy Spirit in Jericho, you will be different. You will be totally different. You will be totally transformed. You will not stay at home on a Sunday. When you get to Jericho, you will not be inconsistent in your church attendance. Are you here? Are you here? Jericho. 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 So Jericho in our, in our spiritual journey or Jericho in the believer's spiritual journey is a place of divine encounter it's a place of divine encounter are, are you in Jericho have you encountered the Holy Ghost have you encountered the Holy Spirit in your walk with God have you encountered the Holy Spirit yet are you in Jericho my friend are you in Jericho are you in Jericho yet because Jericho is a place of divine encounter last week there was somebody lying on the floor here And nobody knows what was going on in there. After church, I said, buddy, what was happening to you? And they say, wait. I believe he got to Jericho. He had an encounter with God. He had an encounter with God. And I'm telling you, when you encounter the Holy Spirit in Jericho, your life will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same again. Jericho. A whole lot of lessons to learn in Jericho. We're going to pick them one by one. Jericho. Let's look at Jericho. Let's look at Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6 verse number 1 says this. It says now Jericho was securely shut up because the children of Israel. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings and its mighty men of valor. You shall march round the city, all you men of war. You shall go all round the city once. This you shall do six days. The seventh, verse number four says, And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark. But, but the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets hallelujah there's a vital lesson there's another vital lesson we can see from the scripture verse that i've just given to you and this lesson is in jericho are you listening turn to your neighbor say neighbor are you listening are you listening are you are you listening yeah in jericho we conquer, we possess, but we don't conquer and possess by our own strength. Hallelujah. We conquer, just ignore that distraction out there. We conquer and we possess, but we don't conquer and possess by our own strength. Are you listening? We don't conquer and possess by our own strength. Are you listening? So that means that the gates of Jericho and the gates of hell cannot be conquered and possessed by the sword in your hand, but by the spirit of Jehovah. By the spirit of Jehovah. In Jericho, you cannot conquer and possess by the sword in your own hand, by the efforts of your own strength. You only conquer and possess by the strength of the Holy Ghost. Are you here? This Jericho. In Jericho. Jericho. Very interesting. I found this out. 